On September 1st, 2016, SpaceX experienced one of the biggest rocket explosions on the launch pad in history with their test of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket at the Space Launch Complex 40, SLC-40, in Florida. The brunt of the destruction severely damaged the SLC-40 systems and hardware, including its tail, transporter erector launcher, launch mount, cross-country propellant feed lines, and a significant portion of the pad's electrical and data lines, and created a large crater at the site of the explosion. SpaceX then took up to 15 months to get the launch pad back in operation, as the result, that explosion became a big scar that'll never be forgotten by all of those at SpaceX. And now, as the company prepares for the first next-gen vehicle orbital flight, SpaceX's president warns that Starship's orbital launch may explode. Why? What is SpaceX's team doing to prevent the nightmare? Let's find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX is looking to test launch a fully assembled Starship, a nearly 30-story tall rocket. Get that into Earth's orbit as soon as this month. The launch site will either be the company's development site in Boca Chica, Texas, or NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It'll be the largest spacecraft ever launched, and authorities at both locations are worried about the possibility of a test failure, something not unfamiliar to SpaceX, that could cause catastrophic damage to the launch pad and surrounding facilities. SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell recently admitted that a lot can still go wrong. Keep in mind, this first one is really a test flight, and the real goal is to not blow up the launch pad. That is success. That coming from Shotwell at a press conference and quoted by CNBC. Not only shot well, but Elon Musk also said it before. For the first orbital launch, our goal is to get into orbit without exploding. To be totally frank, if it takes off without blowing off the stand, stage zero, which is much harder to replace than the booster, that will be a victory. So please do not blow up on the stand, said Musk. Indeed, explosions are always a possible outcome, especially considering the company's many obliterated Starship prototypes over the last several years. SpaceX has tested 12 prototypes of the Starship upper stage in Boca Chica since late 2019. Eight of them ended up in explosions, either on the launch pad or in the sky. The most serious incident was March of 2021 during the descent of the number 12 Starship prototype test. That one spewed debris as far as five miles away from the launch site. It took SpaceX three months to clean it up. There were no reports of injuries or property damage. Seriously though, Ship 24 paired Booster 7 is more than twice the size of any previously tested prototype and 10 times more powerful. And remember, Ship 24 and Booster 7 had even destroyed the launch pad. Several brush fires were visible almost immediately after clouds of dust and steam cleared. More likely than not, the combination of the extreme force, heat, and burn duration likely obliterated the almost entirely unprotected concrete surface below Ship 24. With B7, a large amount of cryogenic liquid was out of a new vent located at the aft end that produced a flood that spread around the adjacent pad. It's unclear if that liquid was nitrogen or oxygen, but either way, the emergency propellant dump appeared to cause a fire to start about 100 feet or 30 meters from the booster and that launch mount. That fire proceeded to burn intermittently for the next two hours, all the while posing a clear and present danger to the rest of the pad and booster if it were to spread in the wrong direction or breach the wrong underground pipe. For orbital flight, its ability can completely turn the Starbase launch pad into ashes. This is why NASA has expressed similar concerns over existing facilities at the Kennedy Space Center. June 2022, the Space Agency's Operation Chief, Kathy Luters, said an explosion of Starship could be devastating to Launch Complex 39A, the only site available to send astronauts to the ISS. NASA said it won't grant launch permission until it fully assesses the safety threats. Besides, in truth, after a rapid fire test campaign in 2020 and 2021 of Starship prototypes, the company's moved more cautiously with its development and test facility in South Texas, known as Starbase. 
This is because the company has likely invested more than a billion dollars in a massive launch and catch tower, and that would support Starship and Super Heavy, as well as ground systems that would support fueling of the massive vehicles. Because so many assets are clustered in a small area near the Gulf of Mexico, SpaceX really does not want to take the risk of destroying infrastructure it spent more than a year building and testing. This would set the Starship launch campaign back months, at least, as the area is rebuilt. It would probably also redouble regulatory concerns that were raised as a part of the FAA process that cleared the South Texas location for experimental orbital launches. So Shotwell is correct when she says the main goal today is to not blow up the launch pad. After that, SpaceX will work to glean data about the performance of the Raptor engines on the rocket and replace those that show deviations from expected behavior. They may or may not achieve this, only a real test can answer. However, SpaceX has apparently now equipped the launch pad very carefully. The Starbase OLM is most likely getting a facelift in the next few weeks before OFT-1. These covers will be added to the exterior of the existing steel structure to protect the GSE control panels from the exhaust plume created by 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy B-7 at liftoff. Last week, SpaceX fired a Raptor directly into a slab of concrete to test how the plume erodes the concrete over time. Also, two Raptors fired at the same time on different test stands. By the way, HPU hydraulic power units installed on Booster 7, that's about to occur, and this will provide hydraulic pressure for the engine's gimbal systems and thrust vector control. Through these, they'll be updated in the future to electric thrust vector control systems. Let's give a huge thanks to Kevin Randolph for these amazing pictures. Besides, the water deluge system build work is still going on and moving quickly. The water deluge system involves spraying large amounts of water onto the launch pad and flame trench just before liftoff. The water helps dampen the acoustic vibration and reduces the heat generated by the rocket engines and protects the launch pad and other equipment from damage. The water is also used to help absorb the shock waves generated by the rocket engines, which can cause damage to the rocket and payload if not properly controlled. The water system typically releases thousands of gallons of water per minute and can create an impressive spectacle as it's activated during a launch. In addition to the water deluge system, SpaceX also uses sound suppression systems, and that reduces the acoustic vibration generated at liftoff, which can cause damage to the rocket and payload if not properly controlled. These systems typically involve the use of large speakers or horns to produce sound waves that cancel out the vibrations generated by the rocket engines. SpaceX has experienced setbacks in the past, including explosions during testing and launch. However, the company has used all these incidents to learn and improve their safety measures and to develop new technology to make the rockets even safer. By implementing these measures, SpaceX can help to ensure that the Starship rockets are as safe as possible and minimize the risk of an explosion on the launch pad. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section because your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you next time.